Hi, I'm Alan R. from Motor Matters, Change Cars and All Things Motoring. I've just arrived at NASREC and I'm here for the classic car show that's taking place this weekend. Absolutely amazing. Looking forward to seeing some absolute classics. And look what I see as I walk in the doors. An absolute classic Cadillac. And I can tell you right now, it's a late 1950s model. How do I know? Because you just have to look at those gigantic fins. Savvy investing is best left to the experts. And when it comes to offshore investing, it's even more important to talk to an expert. Well, Earl Don from Forexpert is the guy you should be talking to for your offshore investments. This is something really, really interesting. It looks like a Mercedes 450 SLC from the mid to late 1970s. But it's not. This is a company called Denarco Classic Cars. They took the platform from an old SLC that was completely and utterly ruined and wrecked, and they have changed it, rebuilt it, redone it. You take a look at the interior. There's some carbon fiber in there. It's redone. It's as brand new. It just is completely different in a lot of ways, but beautifully and classically done. And that is what obviously makes the difference. You can see over there and you come around now the real big difference on this car is actually the front end that's what struck me when i walked past their stand and took a look at it because this bonnet is not an slc it's longer it's wider and it's just very very different and that struck me immediately you also see these headlights they this what they call the stacked headlights from the mercedes w108 series very different as well but they put this together completely rebuilt it and created something, a new classic, can I call it that? And having chatted to Darius from Denarco, he tells me this is just one of some of their projects they're busy with, and they're going to be a lot more coming soon. Some very interesting ones, total rebuilds, new creations, anything of that sort, and you're going to see more of it on the channel one of these days. Just found something very, very special. Look at this Mercedes over here. 1963 300 SE sedan. Apparently, the owner tells me it actually comes out of the Louis Kutzer collection. So you know it's an amazing car and you know it's immaculate and beautifully kept. He says that they've been told it's the only left-hand drive one in South Africa as well. But just look at that wood trim over there. Look at the condition of the vehicle. Look at everything, how plush it is. And I got in the back seat and let me tell you, talk about a squishy couch seat that you sit on it's as soft as they come it really is it's so comfortable interestingly for such a big car there's very limited leg room in the back seat as well but look at the wood on the door panels everything is immaculate everything is original and everything is in absolutely amazing condition not all classic cars are american either some of them are british this is a 1963 wolseley 1660 it's a sedan as you can see it's a pretty big car but it's got a tiny little engine because there were tax laws at the time in the UK that said it didn't matter how big or luxurious or how comfortable your car was, you were taxed based on the engine size. So what they would do is they would put little engines into big cars, give you all the comfort, all the luxury, but certainly, certainly no performance to go with it. But that's how they worked it at that stage. The Italians have done similar with their cars, where I think it was the cylinder count that counted. And of course, the Indian cars that are coming through to South Africa these days, they tax based on the length of the car. So all the cars, well, most of them that come out of India these days are under four meters long for that very, very specific reason. Here's another little one you can see. Similar, but a much smaller car, but it's probably got the same engine as that Wolseley next to it. So you can see that if you wanted performance, you had to go a lot smaller in order to get it. Otherwise, you got small and comfortable. This is that Cadillac that you saw at the beginning of the video. Just look at the sheer size of it and look at those fins. Now, that is probably where they got to the peak 
of these fins and how high they were. They're more like wings than fins. That tells you it's probably a 1959 model. And in fact, I confirmed afterwards, this is a 1959. Also notice left-hand drive over there. It's a big, big car. It's substantial. This is the kind of car that cabinet ministers used to drive around in at that stage and in that era. But I think you get the picture. But over here, look at this. Now, this is a 1964 Chevy Biscayne as well. This is what they would have called a compact car in America at that stage of proceedings. And I think you can see the difference in size, almost the lack thereof, but that's being a bit mean. But you can see it's been restored, it's been redone. And when you look under the bonnet, you can see that engine over there. Nice big V8 engine, being chromed, been done, got lots of bits and pieces. It looks the part, and that's the most important factor, to look right, to look like you're there, and to look like you are absolutely ready for anything, been treated to lots of TLC along the way and really been loved and looked after for many, many years to come. Yet another example of the sheer size of the American cars from the late 1950s and in that era. This is a Pontiac Strato Chief. But let me tell you, this car has been restored and is impeccable. You'll see in a moment it's won lots of awards, lots of prizes because the owners got a roof rack with bits and pieces and trophies and cups. But interestingly, this is a right-hand drive version. And I doubt there are many right-hand drive cars and examples of this car around in South Africa. I'm quite surprised to see it. Massive engine over there. You can see, of course, these all had big V8s. And then that roof rack with all the bits and pieces. This really is a car that I can tell you has been looked after, has been loved, has been taken care of. It's even got that old TJ Joburg number plate sitting over there just for you to see that it's been around for a long time and I would guess probably owned by the same person for a long long time but he's really loved it taken care of it and hopefully he'll do the same with this car for many many more years to come and preserve it in this kind of fantastic condition. The Cortina Bucky was built in South Africa and was around for quite a few years and they've become collector's items these days. I've seen quite a few advertised at crazy prices. But did you know that in fact the South African built versions were exported to the UK for a number of years under the name the P100 and they've even become even more sought after in the UK than they were, are in South Africa right now. They're commanding big prices. They only had 1,600 engines there, whereas you could get V6 versions in South Africa, 2.5 and 3-liter versions. And talking of big sixes, take a look at this uh, Mark III Cortina over here, and it's an original big six 3-liter GT. Magnificent conditions. You can see the spotlights. These cars were so sought after back in the day. And nowadays, let me tell you, commanding very, very big prices as well. Maybe not totally original in every respect, but beautifully restored. And it looks resplendent and looks good. The next one over here. Well, it's up to you whether you like the color or not, but I don't think that's the point. But it's an original XLE model, which means it was one of the more luxurious versions over there. It was a Mark IV, and then you come across here to, again, a green one, but a Mark V in lovely, lovely condition. But let's just skip straight past that to one of the specials. Because later on in their lifetime, they started bringing out the specials. And of course, you got the XR6s, which were the 3-liter V6s. And then they did some limited edition versions as well as time went by. A lot for track racing. And of course, you had to have a certain number made and sold for homologation purposes. And this was one of them, the TF or Team Ford, as they called it. They built and sold probably 250 of them to the public. I really hope this is an original one because it looks in lovely condition. Condition. haven't looked under the bonnet but it looks good and it they used to go like mad they got the that v6 up to about 125 kilowatts towards the end which was a lot of power for those days hello my name is michael i'm the owner of change cars and the host of the tv show all things motoring i have one mission and that is to make a difference to the motoring public making a difference how making sure that you have safe options making sure that you have knowledge in that regard, it is my absolute pleasure and privilege to work with Alan Rosenmeyer of Motor Matters. The man with a hat, I'm the man with no hat, he's the man with the knowledge. Thank you for watching.